it's Maggie and I'm going to talk to you about the best project idea that I've seen, heard of, used in a long time. Um, and it is for the Holocaust. So when I teach the Holocaust, I try to um, help the kids make connections with it because I feel like it feels like it was so long ago for them. Um, that it doesn't feel real and also the number of people that were affected is so large that like they can't even fathom that amount so this lesson plan I think helps with that and it also helps make it seem more real and it helps them make those connections um, so I had the kids make butterflies so Let's start with why butterflies in general. So a lot of times in Holocaust literature and ideals, um, people represent butterflies. Um, and I consider it because it's related to the poem from um, one of the children that was in a concentration camp um, that's called I Never Saw Another Butterfly, I think is the name of it. Um, which is a really sad poem, but it's really good. And also, um, other connections like this children's book by Patricia Polacco that's called The Butterfly. Um, and I know some of my kids in my class this year said that some of their middle school teachers talked about the butterfly effect with it. Um, so that's kind of why butterflies. Um, and I saw someone online in one of the Facebook groups for high school English teachers that I'm a part of. I can't find it anymore, but I will give credit to whoever came up with it for real, but I'm stealing their idea. So they made origami butterflies. Um, and I thought that'd be really cool to do with the kids. And it sounds really difficult. It's not that difficult. I was very pleasantly surprised by how not difficult it was. Um, and the more I did it, the easier it got for me to teach it. So that's another good thing too. So I suggest you practice at home before you do this and then you can go on about it. So the instructional video that I found, which I will link in the bottom, says it's very easy. You do it in three minutes. Um, I did it in three minutes at home, but it took longer than that for kids because you're having to stop and walk around and help them. Um, so you need origami paper. I went to Hobby Lobby. I went to Michael's. I, nobody had 12 centimeters by 12 centimeters origami paper printed on both sides. So I got the big scrapbook paper and I cut it into four pieces um, so they're bigger than that size and that's actually better because it's easier I think to fold some of your boys have big hands and a little teeny tiny piece of paper is not going to work for them so you take the paper use the instructional video and teach the kids how to make the butterflies and this is one that doesn't look perfect um, but this is kind of what it looks like when you finish. I have some that look better than this one, but I was too lazy to get them down. So, um, this is kind of what it looks like afterwards, which I think is cute. The ones that aren't creased and flat as much look even better, but this is kind of how they look. Um, and they're pretty and the kids really liked it. It did take a little bit of time and I did end up saying a few things like this is why we don't do fun things and this is why we can't have nice things because they wouldn't listen to me. Um, but after we made them, so went from this to this, then I gave them a person from the Holocaust. So if you go to the Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington's website, they have these ID cards um, printed up that have a real person that went through the Holocaust and then some background info about them, kind of what happened pre-Holocaust in their life, during the Holocaust, and this is kind of their fate. So did they survive? Did they live? Did they die? Whatever. Um, and these are free. You can just download them. It's a PDF. And it has about 30-something of them. I don't know how many it was. 38 or something. 
So what I did was I cut these into pieces um, like this. So, and then I numbered them on the back. And each week, my kids are going to find out something else about their person. Because we're doing about a three, four week unit. Um, so, you have all these cut pieces. And all I'll do is call out the name of the person. And then I give them another piece. And they're just gluing it on a sheet back together. You could give them the whole sheet. The problem with that is this tells what happened to the person. So if you want it to kind of be like a surprise and an emotional attachment, it can't be with it because they're going to read it. Um, we know how kids like to zoom to the bottom and spoil everything. So um, the first thing that I did was I had them choose their person. So I laid them all out. They were kind of like in strips because I cut them like this. So they're like bookmarks. Um, and they chose their person. That was the first day. And then the second day, I gave them the background info on them. Um, and then that's when we did butterflies. So on the wings of the butterfly, I had them write their person's name, the person that they got. So this is Dora. So you would write Dora and then her last name here. And then on the back, I had them write their name just because I have multiple classes doing this. So there's multiple of them. Um, and they're all different colors and things. So then what we did, I didn't have all my stuff together here, was we took Fishing Line, which is the clear um, string, and we tied it to paper clips. And then, I don't know how your ceiling is, but my ceiling has the panels that you can push up and then there's the metal things that the panels sit in. So if you attach it to a paper clip, you can just stick the paper clip in those metal tracks and then the ceiling tile comes on top of it and it'll hold it perfectly. You don't have to try to stab something into the ceiling or tape it or make it stick like it'll hold it. Um, and these aren't heavy, so it's not a big deal. And what you get is... A room filled with butterflies and so I had the kids pick where they went to hang it and told them to remember where it is and a lot of them hang them like directly over their seat and I will just tell you coming into this room every day it is gorgeous so let me turn the camera around uh, can you see I don't know if you can see or not that was too far back um, and they look really tiny it's kind of hard to see in this picture but they look really good and then back to me so the kids have loved seeing them every day and they've said stuff like why are you so extra why we gotta be so extra so they don't know what we're going to do with them and they're gonna get very sad when they find out but at the end of the unit when they get this last piece um, they're gonna find out if their person lived or died and so what we're going to do is we're going to take down the butterflies of the people that died. And I think it's going to really help them understand kind of the gravity of the Holocaust. Um, and I'm hoping that they're going to be emotionally attached to their person, um, having dealt with them for a few weeks, and that it's going to be an emotional response. Um, Eventually, of course, we'll take down all the butterflies, but on that day, we're going to take down just these. Um, the person that did this online, I think, had them actually cut the butterflies down. I think I'm going to have mine just take it down, because then that means that we can keep the string and the paper clips for the future. Because um, if you cut them, they're going to be really short. Um, and here's what I will say. The butterflies are not long enough that pretty much my tallest people in the room still can't reach them from the ground. So I know sometimes when we do like hang things up and stuff, the kids mess with them and they're a distraction, but the kids don't mess with them, um, mostly because they can't reach them. So if when we hung them up, kids had to stand on the desk. But even then, only the tallest kids could stand on the desk and actually reach the ceiling. So that was good because that means that 
they can't really mess with them or pull them down. Um, we only attached them to the fishing line with tape and I only had three fall the first day and we're on the first week and no more have fallen since then. So I think hopefully no more will fall and I won't have to do damage control with them. Um, I will say I'm pretty sure they're a fire hazard. I've had multiple people at my school tell me they're a fire hazard. Sorry. If someone comes and tells me I have to take them down, then I will take them down. But um, they're going to stay up unless someone tells me I have to take them down. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than for permission when it comes to this. <sighs> That wasn't a good ending to that. Um, so that's kind of the butterfly project that goes with this. I'll link the video to the origami video um, down at the bottom. And again, if you can't find origami paper, I just use scrapbook paper and cut it into squares using my little slicing cutter thingy. Um, and remember, these are free on the National Holocaust Memorial Museum's website. Um, another interesting thing that I've done in the past, I had made these, which are the exact same things we were looking at, but they don't have that final piece um, to them, and they're just on colored paper and laminated and stuff like this. Um, I had these, but I forgot. It was at the very end of a year, like two or three years ago, and I forgot to tell the kids to turn them back in, and so I lost a bunch of them, so I only have a few of these left. So some of my other classes got these, and the only thing I'm telling them is don't read the whole thing, and some of them are doing it anyway just because, and some of them are not. So if you can have a class that you can handle saying just read this, just read this, just read this, it still doesn't have the spoiler piece at the end. Um, so that could work too. And these were actually retyped up and remade from the other ones by a person on Teachers Pay Teachers and they have this available for free on their site. So if you want, I will link that down there too so you can grab that if you want. Um, going back to this, I do read this book to my class. It's Patricia Polacco, so, you know, the pictures are absolutely gorgeous, um, and it's definitely a good way to help them kind of understand a concept, and my original idea was to read this to them while they made the butterflies, but of course they needed my assistance, so we read it afterwards and just had what we call story time, and I showed them the pictures and everything. Um, and we're going to read the butterfly poem I was talking about. The I've, I have never seen another butterfly um, or whatever it's called. We're going to read that one at the end when on the day that we take down the butterflies of the people that have died. So that's kind of my lesson plan around that. Hopefully you can use it in your classroom. I'm sure there are plenty of other ways that you could do it. I mean, if they make me take my butterflies down, I'm probably going to just tape them along the perimeter of the room, like on the wall, um, and hopefully that will be okay. Um, but I still love the effect of them right now, and they actually sway and move. And since they're on fishing line, you can't really see the string unless you're really looking for it, so it really looks like they're just kind of hovering above and it's beautiful. So I hope you're having a great day. If you have any suggestions for me with this unit or if you have an explanation of the butterflies or anything like that you want to share, leave me a comment down below. Um, like the video if you think it sounds like a cool idea and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and then maybe we'll have a giveaway of sorts or something like that. Hope to hear from you soon and hope you have a great week. We're getting towards the end of school. I think we have like 40 days of school left. So, ooh, bye. All right. So today, you are going to find out what happened to your person. Um, and we are going to do it a little bit differently than we have been doing it before. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at a poem. Okay? You don't have to write anything down. We're just looking at it, okay? reading it, thinking about it.
about it together. Okay? Um, and I will tell you, this poem was written by a kid um, in a ghetto during the Holocaust. Perhaps if the sun's tears would sing against the white stone, such, such a yellow. It's carried lightly way up high. It went away, I'm sure because it wished to kiss the world goodbye. For seven weeks I've lived here, pinned up inside this ghetto. But I have found what I love here. The dandelions call to me, and the white chestnut branches in the court. Only, I never saw another butterfly. That butterfly was the last one. Butterflies don't live in here, in the ghetto. We read your person. And they did not survive. You are taking down your butterfly today. I'm going to call your person's name. I want you to tell us their full name. I want you to tell us um, some stuff about them. And then I'm going to give you the last piece to the puzzle. Okay? So you need all the pieces out if you don't have them. Because you're going to need to know. I mean, I know. Ruth was deported to Lenzing, a sub camp of the Malvinhausen concentration camp. Liberated by American troops, Ruth returned to Prague. She was the sole survivor of her family. <clears throat> Maria and her family were among 80 Jews in the camp who were machine gunned to death mm -hmm. by retreating SS soldiers just days before U.S. forces reached the area. Maria was 13. So where's your butterfly? David, if you could get up there and take it down and just drop it. Okay, so we got everybody. Um, how, even if you survived, even if your person survived, how does it feel hearing your fate? Do you, do you feel yourself take the deep breath? You know, before you find out. Um, I think this is good for us to do because it's good for us to realize that it's not just Jewish people. We had Jehovah's Witness. We had people that were resistance fighters. They got captured. Um, men, women, children. Um, this was one of those things that affected everyone. Um, and think of what? Uh, butterflies represent in, in our real life. Okay? Freedom. Right? They're beautiful. Um, you know, when you're a little kid, that's what you like to do is chase things. You know, you chase butterflies and you try to catch them, but for the most part, you know, they're not fast enough. Um, so I want you to think about this idea of the butterfly representing freedom. That would be called a what? In the symbol. A thing representing something else. It is a metaphor too, yes, you're right. But symbol, a symbol would be an actual like noun, concrete thing that then represents something else. So a butterfly representing freedom. Um, okay, so here's the deal. The paper and stuff you obviously need to glue that last piece. If your butterfly was taken down, then what I need you to do is um, well, actually, everybody's going to take theirs down now. Oh, oh, my goodness. We don't know people. We say it's not, it doesn't affect me. It's not my problem. But we're talking about real life people being gone. And it's going to make a difference to someone somewhere. So when you hear about things happening in the world, remember this. And remember, it does matter, and it does affect you somehow.